Good evening. This is a uh, special edition of Family Tree. We're filling in for Hamilton Cloud, who is away on a very big assignment. We did a program on the December the 15th where we had uh, some researchers who dealt with AIDS and also some researchers who dealt with the ancient belief systems. And tonight, we did promise that uh, we would uh, have those people back. However, uh, Zeers Miles, who is the AIDS researcher, uh, will not be here this evening. But uh, we feel that uh, what we're going to deal with uh, this evening will uh, shed some light on the ideology and the thinking behind people who would come up with a virus such as AIDS. But in a much bigger context, we have as our guest uh, Jordan Maxwell, who is a writer, a teacher of ancient science, sciences and ancient belief systems. And we're going to be talking about uh, the impact historically in terms of world religions, religions, religious beliefs, and how they have been uh, propagated throughout history and the secret societies that were formed around these belief systems which still exist today and which play a big part in some of the behind the scenes actions that take place that the general public has no idea of what they're being impacted with by whom and from what ideology, what systems that comes from that. And it's going to shed some lights on Christianity, Judaism, and other world religions. And uh, so welcome to the program. Uh, we have uh, Jordan Maxwell. Thank you very much, Marcus, for allowing me to be here. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank KPFK for allowing me the opportunity to speak because in this particular time in which we're living, to be able to speak freely is going to be a very important in the very near future because our freedoms are very closely being watched and are being monitored and uh, there is the possibility we may lose the freedom of speech very soon and KPFK is an outstanding example of free speech and I'm happy to be here with them. Thank you. We certainly uh, appreciate that here at uh, KPFK and of course uh, to our listeners out there. Uh, want to remind our listeners to uh, support the KPFK and uh, within the next month we do have another fun drive so we want to see those phones light up uh, so that we have the can continue with the type of opportunities that we have with the kind of programming that we are able to uh, present here on li listener sponsored uh, radio station um, well uh, we can uh, begin into uh, the whole concept of uh, ancient belief systems, and uh, you can start. Well, first of all, Marcus, I want to say that on this planet, there are no passengers. We're all crew. So we all have a stake in what's happening in this world, and whether we want to deal with it right now or not, we're going to be faced with what is going on in the world generally, and especially right here in this town. H.G. Wells said that civilization is nothing more than a race between education and catastrophe and that's what we got coming and looking at us as catastrophe from all corners of the world certainly from the standpoint of this new world order yes. that uh, <coughs> our illustrious President Bush has uh, yeah, reminded has us of and helped bring to us <laughs> now you know the Talmud said if there is no knowledge there is no understanding and if there's no understanding then there's no knowledge and that's what we have today a whole lot of no understanding and it's about time that people who do know speak up. Uh, and, of course, President Wilson said, if you want to make enemies, just try and change something. So I know that anyone who tries to bring to the public the facts behind the world that we live in are going to be criticized and condemned or whatever. But there, are, I believe, and I'm sure KPFK believes that there's enough people in this world who want to know the truth and who are willing to stand 
and fight for it. And that's, again, I want to say I appreciate being here with you. Um, one of the main problems and tragedies in the world today is that those who, uh, that no one knows what it is that he doesn't know. And that it's um, usually the man that thinks he knows everything doesn't know anything. And one of the most important ways of learning today in our society is symbols and emblems. We see them on, uh, you know, used cars, and we see them on um, oil companies. We see them banks, emblems and symbols of companies and logos. Well, emblems are like words. If you can't read the emblems or symbols, then you don't know what the story is. And especially is that true in religion, because we're seeing so much of what we have said to be religion, and in fact is nothing more than politics. Of course, politics is religion, and religion is politics. Because there's never been a religious movement on earth that wasn't a little political. And there's never been a political movement on earth that didn't have a little religion in it. Tonight, I'd like to focus on the religion that's prominent in our country, and that's Christianity. Now, before I get into this subject, I want to say that I don't, I don't appreciate anyone putting me into a box or pigeonholing me and deciding who I am or where I'm coming from, because if you don't know me, you don't know where I'm coming from. So I'm not a communist. I'm not a Nazi. I'm not uh, racist. I'm, I'm just a human being with something to say. I belong to no particular political party. Consequently, I'm not coming from any particular place. I'm a researcher, a teacher. I enjoy what I do. I've been doing it for 32 years, and it's about time, I feel, to bring my work to the public and help other people to understand some of the things that they're seeing that they don't understand. Now, we, we see about, in this country, we see a lot on television of Christianity, and, uh, and we see presidents and congressmen and senators and everybody, all the, the, the civic leaders are all into Christianity and going to church and being fine people. And for being such fine people, we find out that they're not really fine. As a matter of fact, an honest politician anymore is one who does not take a bribe that he didn't earn. So our system is falling apart. It's collapsing all around us. And the reason why is it's built on lies. From perhaps one of the greatest lies or misconceptions, and let's be generous, maybe misunderstandings, is Christianity. And I feel that there's so much I would like to say tonight, but I would like to be able to deal with Christianity first and get that out of the way, because until such time as the people understand where Christianity came from, how it was arranged, and why it teaches what it does, you're not going to understand the mentality behind it. And we're talking about a white mentality. If we go back, say, 15 to 10, 15,000 years ago into the ancient world, and you understand that they didn't have all of the, the modern-day conveniences that we do, you know, the television to occupy our time and waste our lives for us, and they, don't, they didn't have the nice, warm homes and cars and all the things that keep them occupied. It was a very hostile and un uh, an inhospitable world. It was filled with fear and coal and very difficult for human beings to live. It's especially in, in Europe. Oh, yes. Uh, well, all over Europe, especially in Europe. But what was it that was said that the uh, adult would die at around 20 to 21 years old? You know, th that was a very hostile world for the humans to live in. And we're talking again about 10 to 15,000 years ago. Now, it was perceived, obviously, from the beginning, according to the best that we have in history and the best that we can deduce from, from the ancient record, that the first enemy of man was darkness. That was the first thing that man realized that was frightening to him, and his world was just plain darkness. Because uh, l it was bad enough trying to live during the daytime, but when the sun went down, it gets scary because there were predator animals out there, <clears throat> there were enemies that lurking in the bush, and so nighttime became very fearful to our first men. Now, when you understand that kind of a world and understand those conditions, from there you begin to appreciate how they perceived the coming of that orb of day or the sun as being something wonderful to look forward to, 